Any question so far? So, so that's, that's why eventually the reason we learn a math um, is because it's useful, right? Not because it's just, um, just uh, you know, just as uh, pretty. Uh, of, course, of course, pretty is also important. Its beauty is also important, but, uh, but uh, and most important is how, how, we, how we can use, how we can use it in the real life. So which that is why, you know, why Newton realized he needs his at that time his mass of available mass uh, is not um, is not uh, 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 enough so he had to reinvent those he has to invent those in order to in order to um, to make make to to be to make it make sense right so that is how this all this concept coming from so once you understand this everything become really you, once you grasp the core concept of the, this, and then the, then the, you are very easy to understand the Newton Newton physics or Newton laws. For example, you know Newton law says second law says force equals to m a. So basic force is 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 a, a mass times acceleration. So basically, any material any any uh, sub objects like a box on on a floor, if you use a force to push it, and where it you know if you keep the force, this one we're going to speed up, and with a uh, acceleration a. So keep if you keep this force, this one will become faster, moving faster, faster because it has an acceleration. Acceleration risk really means within a delta t time, change delta v, increase delta v. So velocity keep increase. So this is basically Newton law saying the, the force between the force and the acceleration, what kind of relationship, the second law, very most important second law, F equals ma. So that is the Newton second law, okay? So, so Newton second law, if you're writing in a, in a calculus form, is really F equals to mv derivative, right? So velocity is derivative is acceleration. So so then then once you have this uh, mass concept here, including integral, everything become really really easy, because now now you can say oh when we have a free fall. We have a free fall uh, ball in the air, which only apply uh, only force uh, is is um, is mg or the uh, the the you know the gravitation we we call the weight sometimes is the force gravitation force. So only only such kind of case like a ball in the air you throw a ball. So you throw a ball and or you shoot a can you know cannonball, you shoot a bullet, or you you kick a football, you know, out and so uh, you kick a football out, go through this kind of you know move uh, you know trajectory. So why is this shape? So why this is a parabolic shape? <coughs> is uh, everything governed by the by this formula and uh, and so it's uh, you can very easy to derive uh, with uh, with the math we learn here. Um, so so basically, now let's go back to uh, go back to little bit of physics before I come back for more 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 more, uh, more math because I think this um, you know I I kind of switch off the order a little bit sometime. Hopefully you are you feel more interesting to learn. Um, so basically, let's say let's go let let's talk about um, physics fundamental. Okay, fundamental. So basically, so this um, the the most fundamental um, is called the Newton Newton physics. 
or Newton law. So that describes, um, that's basically um, Newton trying to understand fundamentally, just like, just like, you know, you, you, you kick, you kick, uh, you kick a football out and follow this kind of trajectory, you, you, you let it go, uh, apple from a tree or from your hand, it's where fall this towards, uh, towards the ground. Okay. And so all this, oh, even, even, even later on realize actually, you know, earth and uh, moon and the orbiting, everything is governed by very simple physics, which discovered by Isaac Newton called the Newton physics. So Newton physics is basically saying Newton physics has a three fundamental laws. The second law, the first one we are come back. The second one we already said is F equals MA. So it really means, you know, in any, objects and um, depending on what kind of force ex exerted on the object, the force will generate uh, acceleration. So acceleration is what causes the speed change. Speed change, of course, is called, speed, of course, causing the you know, sh position change. So this is uh, Newton's second law, has a very simple formula F equal MA. So which eventually governed all those kind of movement. Okay. Newton first law saying called inertia. Inertia law basically saying that any object will stay in as, as current uh, movement if there's no any other force applied to it. So really means really means for example when you skate um when you when you when you put a skateboard you know skate shoe skate on the ice and once you go you are finding you will keep going until until of course there's friction on the ice but the friction is is much less than on the ground so that's why you can keep you can you can slide for really long distance and pretty much keep your speed all that way until you hit a, a wall or somebody push you, right? Or you, you intentionally try to stop your skating by, by, by putting your, your, your you know, a skate shoe and try to against the ice ground. Otherwise, keep sliding, right? So, so or, you know, where we are, we in our in a car when you drive or you're sitting in a bus, and the suddenly the suddenly the the the, the driver stops the car suddenly, and so you are you what are you going to show? You're going to move forward. You want to keep original movement. So that is, and uh, of course, until you hit a you know hit a something and. Uh, push you to change. So this is basically the Newton first law called inertia. Inertia is basically object always keep as current movement until it has a, another force applied to it to make change. So uh, in Chinese we call it guan xing, guan xing yun dong. So everything is should be so why 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 our earth so why our earth do not fall it is falling it's falling to sun but it's falling you know orbiting keep keep orbiting so this all relate to the this all relate to the you know newton first and second law the first law is saying the inertia okay got it um, and then the third law is called, uh, the third law basically saying that, you know, when you, third law is about the interaction, is basically when you push down the, the, let me finger push down the desk surface, 
I try to apply stronger, stronger force. What I feel, I feel my my fingertip pain because the because the desktop surface also push back on my on my on my fingertip. So how much force I apply to this desk, the desk I give back exactly force. So it's basically F equals to F. So that is the Newton third law. So I push, of course, uh, uh, it's give you, diff, we call it F equals minus F. It's because of the, 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 uh, the different direction. I push down, I try to push downward and it's a, a desktop push me back upward. Okay, but the same magnitude. I apply very light, then, then desktop also push me back very light. I push harder and harder, and it's also uh, desktop apply force harder, harder. So that, so that is third law. So basically, that's Newton's three laws. Newton's three law is, um, is of course, is, um, is, is Newton, Newton uh, summarized eventually in a beautiful mathematical form, uh, but it's uh, built on the, built on um, several thousands years of human knowledge. Uh, which I I went um, over a little bit in the beginning of uh, our our lectures, and uh, you know especially observe the sky. Um, so one of the biggest contribution to uh, to Newton's uh, discovery is really the uh, the orbiting of the you know star and I mean the the planet whatever. So this basic sky observation is very much related to the discovery of Newton law. Of course, Newton, Newton have done lots of experiments, for example, try to prove, try to leading to this formula, force equals ma, right? Okay, this is basically a little bit of physics. And uh, the amazing thing, the amazing thing, this is Apple, so apple fall down to ground, follow the, this F equal MA is exactly the same F equal MA governing the movement of earth orbiting sun or moon orbiting earth. Governing by the same F equal MA. So that is a really a human, the, one of the human biggest uh, realization or biggest achievement is to understand all oh, actually whatever you know we uh, the uh, you know the law governing like we jump we kick the ball we throw a rock or an apple fall from the treetop is same law governing our earth sunrise you know, uh, you know, uh, sunset or governing the, you know, the, all the movement of in the sky. So that is an amazing, amazing understanding because uh, um, one of the core, one of the core uh, um, belief of physicists or scientists is this world um, God created and is, can be described by simple, pretty mathematic formula such as f equal ma e is equal just three m. letters but uh, but it's got described a lot more uh, we can we can see later great examples you can explain almost everything we observe the movement uh, we call it kinet, kinet, kinetics every object we we saw every day from the sky to to earth surface so that is amazing uh, amazing how pretty the physics science how powerful the science can be okay so now now with our limit uh, of calculus just uh, you know three hours calculus knowledge let's see what we can do uh, with this formula and uh, so you know how 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 to how to go, how go from there? How we can describe how we can describe a simple, for example, scan we 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 fire a, a fire a cannonball 
to the enemy's ground. So, so this, this is our cannon and the shooter bow to go to here. So how we describe this whole thing and knowing where this one is along the way and how far we can, how far we can, sh we can sh shoot and how high we can, we can shoot. So how, how, to, how to use the Newton three law to derive this simple, simple uh, movement, uh, which of course this part naturally including the part like we, you, in your hand, you throw, throw, uh, throw a tennis ball out vertically, then they will go up and slow down and then hit the highest point, then coming back. Do you like derive the position of the X and Y axis in terms of like T and then if you combine them together, you get rid of T and you, know, you get an equation of this projectile? Yeah, we can quickly derive that, yes. Um, we can quickly derive that as, um, as, um, as uh, in a simple, based on, the, based on this one formula and, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Newton's three law, mm -hmm. And the sum of the calculus concept. <clears throat> yeah. How about that? The, the reason is, of course, you don't need a calculus to solve this problem. You can use an algebra to solve it. But the reason I want to use calculus is really try to show, um, you know, later on more example. This is, um, you know, once you have powerful mass massive tool, you are able to do the sense in a so basically, you can view this simple question in a much, from a much higher level. And then later on, when you deal with more complicated case, and you, you, can, you can also do, you can think about it, you know, um, as in a much simpler way. Under uh, my own philosophy is, I don't want to remember so many formulas, and, uh, but I want to understand how each formula is derived. And therefore, I only need to understand the core concept, help me to understand why and how, and uh, you know, uh, you know how I get I, how I get from A to B, how I get from a basic Newton three law to all the very complicated movement description, describe all, all the all the movements and uh, all the physics. So so that is uh, the way you're studying. The way you study physics, not by memorization. The way that is not the right way to to learn physics. The way you learn physics is by by logical, by understanding some fundamental thing and the best definition and the math, and then you can derive a, a great great physicist only need a pencil and a stack of blank paper they can derive everything. Okay. So that is uh, what, um, you know, what, uh, you know, the greatest physicist, like uh, I mentioned, Richard Feynman can do. Basically, he, 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 he basically just like that. Yeah, you know. So that is what I, 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 I think that which uh, the science should be, or the, at least the physics should be. So no much memorization. You don't need to memorize, oh, you know, S equals to, you know, um, you know, um, VT plus or minus one half GT square. So lots of people memorize those. Oh, uh, Leo, you memorized uh, V square minus V zero square equals two GS, I guess, right? And, uh, all, all this kind of thing is, you know, why? So I don't like to memorize this formula, but I, I, I like to see those formulas say, oh yeah, sure, it's easy to understand those because. So that is what I try to, try to, uh, try to, uh, try to explain to you, okay? Ho hopefully helpful. Sometimes school, school doesn't teach those because um, number one, 
um, many, many, many of you, when you learn those fundamental physics, like this example, try to explain it. So you, you haven't learned the calculus. So therefore, it's really hard to understand this from the from origination. And, and number two, um, lots of uh, teachers do not really understand them either. So from that level. So that is why it's um, important, okay. Okay, now let's go back to, go back to the, go back to the, let's, let's, let's still go back to this fundamental cannonball shooting example. Okay, let's derive all those. So we are, we call this, eventually this distance is D, we call the highest point is H, right? And every location here, I want, we want to understand why, this is a function y x, right? And uh, y x, and uh, so here is uh, x, here is y. Of course, it's also a function of t, right? It's, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, also a function of time, okay? So the so initial condition, what kind of initial condition we know, okay? We know there is a cannonball, a piece of metal, a piece of, uh, you know, a piece of uh, orange, a piece of anything, rock. And this one, we know it has a um, basic physical parameter called mass, m. We call it m, right? Okay, and we needed to know the initial initial velocity called v zero v naught and we know we know its shooting angle called a c a theta so that is all we need to know and then we can we can derive all the rest right so basically if you tell me what is what is this cannonball initial speed from uh, what from what kind of angle shoot out, and how heavy the pen, uh, cannonball is, m, right? Actually, this one doesn't really need, but uh, we, we, we uh, you know, uh, for this description, we don't really need this, this guy, because as uh, shooting, shooting, shooting anything will be similar. But, uh, but we still, um, during this whole process, we will use this one uh, because uh, we are needed for, for the uh, uh, process in between, okay? So, so how to derive it? So we know, we know, the, we know all the, we know the um, Newton's second law says m equals m a, okay? And, um, and uh, for for a ball or for for anything, we have a mass, and uh, the the when they when the ball la, uh, leaves a uh, cannon gun, a uh, cannon out, leave, you know when you kick 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 that out, you shoot a, a soccer ball. So one is uh, leaves your your foot. The only thing left. The force left for this guy is a gravitation from the Earth, nothing else. Of course, there's air friction, and but let's forget about air friction. And assuming it can do this in vacuum, or, or you know, at least air friction is uh, in this most case uh, is negligible. And so the only thing left is basically we call uh, this guy. Sometimes we call the weight. Is gravitational force. Gravitational force is actually is 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 also F equal m a. But uh, on the on the Earth's surface, we have we we have a called gravitational constant g. Um, on the Earth's surface, on the same level, same roughly same height level, which which basically here is Earth with a diameter with a half diameter. I mean radians. 64,000 kilometer roughly. So we are standing here, throw, kick the ball. And uh, 
within our normal knowledge we know we won't leave we won't leave the surface by much right maybe 100 meter so you know we can kick about maybe 30 meter high so that one compared to the earth's diameter is nothing so therefore everything so for this kind of movement we basically doing on earth's surface right so therefore the 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 force between this guy and the earth is constant and because the distance doesn't change relative to the center of the earth so that is why there's called uh, this called mg is called describe our our on um, our weight our our um, you know gravitational force for any subject any object and uh, and uh, and so so basically that's mg is only force left got it so but but then what is g g uh people say oh g is uh you know 9.8 meter per second square why so this one will come back because this one this one cannot be answered by newton law itself by newton second law itself this one has to has to has to come out uh, by the gravitational newton universal gravitational law there's another law so another law describe the force between apple or ourselves and uh, with earth so that one you can last one is we're getting to here but right now let's don't worry about let's assume the you know any anyone any uh, object on the earth's surface has a has a weight attracted by the earth's center is described by the formula mg g is a constant is roughly 10 meter per second square okay and um, um, and uh, m is our math so that is only force applied to here so in that case in that case in that case you know f equals mg only force and which is we know is m f equals m m a by newton second law a is basically velocity's derivative or or v is d i mean a is d v d t velocity is derivative got it okay so that's the only formula governor us right now so if you really look at it here basically telling you the only thing so you can cancel m m so the basically telling us g dv dt equals g so that's the only thing describe our movement here okay now now of course there is um i i make it a very simple actually there is a direction um you know um for this kind of two two dimensional movement there's called a direction the reason is our force is this when this button, uh, cannonball shoot out at angle of theta the force is mg is only vertical going minus y direction right the ball is shooting going this direction so so basically we have this coordinate x direction and the y direction so we have to split it, we have to treat as a two direction separate separately the reason is this vertical direction is governed by a mg force horizontal direction has no force correct so horizontal direction is basically has no force only has a speed project on the horizontal direction so basically horizontal direction the initial speed 
vx project onto the x direction is v0 cosine theta, correct? And the vy initial, uh, vx0, yy0, is v0 times sine theta, right? So that is projected to the y direction and x direction, the two initial velocity, right? Okay. So according to, so for the x direction, because there's no force, right? There's no force along the x direction uh, parallel to the uh, Earth's surface. There's no force because uh, all the force is only, only along the y direction because that's only the gravitational force. So therefore, v x v zero cosine theta according to f equals m m m a of velocity. Basically, f x m v x. So this one, this force is zero. So therefore, v x derivative is zero. This is basically the Newton first law saying that there's no force, there's no change. Therefore, v x any time will be equals to original uh, velocity v zero cosine theta. So this one always true. So any time along the way while shooting, the x direction velocity is always constant, which equals to original original um, x direction original x direction velocity. So that is this formula. Okay. Any question? So in that case, in that case, so from here, how long, how how long is this d going to be? If I know the how long the time from beginning to end, the ball hit back to the to the ground. If I know the t, the total time, then I know the d. D is distance is velocity time time. So really, really means I know the velocity, which is constant v zero cosine theta along x direction. If I know the total time is t. After, uh, you know, during the during this whole travel, hit the ground, then I know the d, right? That's easy, right? Correct. But the only thing is, I don't know the t. If I know the t, the total time together, I already know the so the those the distance traveled. Okay. So so now we have to look at the vertical direction. Vertical direction, we have this initial speed. And then we have a force, mg, which is against against your travel, because the force is another direction. Force is a negative y direction. Velocity is a positive y direction for y direction v zero. So it's basically the gravitation try to hold the to hold the cannonball, pull it back, slow it down. Right, so that's that's what happened here. So now, now basically we are we are um, we are dealing with um, you know just go back here, dealing with this formula. Right. So this formula basically saying that velocity derivative of we call the y direction velocity derivative is governed by minus g because there are two different directions. So uh, force is uh, negative y direction, velocity is going positive direction. So, so this is what you get. So once you have this one, you will know what is vy. vy equal to what? We have as derivative is minus g. This is go back to our fundamental, our um, you know derivative we learn, right? 
So what kind of uh, Vy as a function of t once you get the derivative is minus g? What's that? Well, actually, it's, you're doing an integral, basically, right? So it's antiderivative, basically, question. It's like you're doing an integral. And um, <clears throat> let's, let's rewrite here. So basically, we're saying dvy dt equals minus g. Right? And we know Vy0. Initially, we know V0 equals sine theta. This is at t equals to 0, this one equal to this. And uh, then rest of time described by this formula. So that's it. That's it. So that's that is all the very simple uh, simple math, math description. So so then we try to get what is y as a function of t satisfy what kind of function allow me to get here get back to here once you get a time derivative. So that is easy. That's basically ask me dy dx equals to minus g. What y equals to what? then give me a dy dx equals to a constant. Minus g is constant, right? So basically saying dy dx equals to a constant. Y, what can the y function need to be in order to derivative is a constant? Yeah, we know, we know, we know x, if y equals x, dy dx equals to what? You should know by now equals what, right? Re remember when we do the derivative, you can go back to review your derivative thing. So is a, a function, so x square function, the derivative is two x, x function derivative is one, and x cubic uh, function is three x square x n the function derivative is n power x n minus one so all those are basic of derivative got it so now you know oh yeah this function must be just simply like the constant time of time this x or here is basically simply v y t should be minus g t like this, because this derivative gave you minus g. Okay. However, this is still not yet because if I add another constant, I, I add another constant um, and add whatever, I add three, add five, add 100. So this derivative still go back. Now, if you go dy, d t equals to d g minus g. So this is always true, no matter, as long as this kind of function minus g t plus anything, plus a constant, because constant derivative is zero. So this gives you this, right? So now we already have the function v y t equals to minus g t plus a constant. But how we get a constant, you just go back to initial because because initial when when time t equal to zero, we have to say we y we y t equals to zero has to equals to v zero sine theta. If you combine those two, saying that c equals to v zero sine theta, correct? So therefore, we y t velocity, once you shoot the ball out, you shoot the ball out along the way, the velocity anytime along the y direction, the velocity, actually it's, uh, it's going this uh, velocity, this is going back, is this formula is basically minus gt 
plus V0 sine theta. That's it. So now we have Vx t equals x direction is always a uh, constant. Now you get, now I have the, a description for the, for the ball in the air anytime, anytime I know the vertical velocity and the horizontal velocity both. Got it? Any questions so far? Okay. Okay. Here is basically where's you know if you understand that derivative actually is quite simple, right? It's nothing really, nothing. The only concept right now um, you make out confused is first, um, all the movement has to, all the we call the vector movement, all the vector movement like velocity is vector, acceleration is vector, force is vector. This kind of the description has to split into two two direction. Um, you know, one x, one is y. The reason is um, this two is ninety degree because the the governing principle governing a uh, governing force is different along two direction. So in this case, one has force, one has no force. So therefore, you you treat them differently. So this concept of, you know, and dealing with um, two dimensional or three dimensional movement, you have to, you know, to basically decompose them into two orthogonal directions. This is what you may be new to you. And this is something um, we will come back. Um, so that is one, you may get confused. So why you need to do along one X direction, along Y direction? Okay. Wait, but does, don't we also do that if we want to do traditional algebra? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, if you if you you can link that way, it's it's it's, a, it's the same. But um, to some people, they may got confused. That's one thing. So why is two direction? Okay. So once you understand that each direction you treat separately, they decoupled. Then the, then the everything is a, is x direction has no force. Therefore, is um, you know initial the first law or f equals ma equal to zero. Therefore, acceleration is a, along x direction is zero, which means velocity doesn't change. Therefore, initial velocity forever will be that velocity until it hit, hit ground stop, right? On the y direction, you have a constant force, which means constant acceleration because f equals ma. So therefore, you know, if you understand a little bit, uh, you know, calculus, you know, this is easy to derive here, right? Of course, you don't need a, in this case, you don't need a calculus, right? You can do that. It's okay. You don't need a calculus because the constant, because uh, the acceleration G is constant here. But what if G is not a constant? I will give, uh, later I can give you an example. G is not constant on another acceleration case. It's not constant. So what? So sometimes a question um, a student will, will be maybe argue saying, Dr. Wang, why you needed to go over those, you know, Sha Ji Yong Niu Dao? Why you needed to use calculus dealing with so simple uh, physics? Because this is just an example. You learn how to go here, eventually help you solve out more comp complex problem. What if now I say G is not constant? If I, I say G is actually a t, function of T, when I kick ball out, the, 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 the ball's uh, weight is changing with time. Can you do that with your, your other method? You won't be, you won't be able. You have to come back to here because it's more general, right? For example, I will say, if, what if I say G is 
G is, uh, you know, is uh, 2T. Uh, G is, you know, 9.8 meter per second square time T. Now saying basically G is increasing with time. Can you, can you redo the whole thing? Then you found out your old method doesn't, won't work. The only way it work is this way, have to use calculus. So that's why Newton cannot avoid calculus if he want to really, really, uh, you know, uh, talking about all those more movement in a more general case. So that is why it is important. This, you know, this going through this look like a little bit slow right now because first time you go over those, but it's important. Okay, come back to here. So we, we know that anytime we tie, we, we, we T. So now I'm going to, 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 to come here because we were saying that, we were saying that we still want to get, for example, we, we want to get the height, we want to get the distance, but uh, we already know the distance is uh, speed time, how long the time travel, this constant sleep speed, right, the total travel time, I can get a D. But I don't know what it what the T is right now, right? I don't know how long once I kick the ball out, how long it take flying until it hit the ground. So now let's let's get get a T. So from here we can get a T easily. So you know we Y T equal this formula, right? So so the ball basically shooting up and 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 the one at hit the top, the highest point in the sky. So at this point, what is Vy at this point? Zero. At that highest data point, at the peak, at the highest you know, point, it's basically is like you throw a ball vertically and hit the, top, hit, hit the highest point, then fall back. And at the highest data point, at that moment, the velocity is zero because there's no velocity. If there's a velocity, still a velocity upwards, then the ball should keep moving upwards because the ball is stay there at that moment, doesn't move up anymore. So that time, that is a moment Vy equals zero. So from here, Vy equals zero, we can easily get T is T reaching the higher, they call T1. T1 really means reaching the higher state point, basically half of the cycle, right? So the other half is symmetry. So half of the cycle, the time is Vy, Vyt equals, is, is when Vyt equals zero, T1 equals to what? T1 equals to V0 sine theta divided by G. Correct? So now we know. And, and then it's starting to fall down, fall back to the ground. So that half cycle actually is also same time as here is because the symmetry, if you really look at the curve. Okay, so therefore the total T will be two V zero sine theta time G. Okay, so in that case, we get a D. D we said V zero cosine theta time T, which means V zero cosine theta time two V zero sine theta time divided by G equals G V zero square two sine theta cosine theta two sine theta cosine theta which if you know the trig well, it is sine two theta. Okay, that is the D. Okay. So only thing we still, we don't, we have the, we still need to get the edge, the height. Height we need to do a little bit more in order to get height, okay? 
So but we already got, we already take care about G, uh, uh, T. Only thing we don't know is height, right? And of course we needed to know any time at any loc any time at which location we needed to know the know the position coordinate at any time. Right now we know the velocity coordinate at any time. We already know any time velocity is. But uh, when I st we still know the location. So now go back to here. So we have we know we 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 y t let me go back here so for this movement i want to know any time the physical location of this ball is and i we already know any time of the horizontal location because we already know the speed is v0 cosine theta so if i know at the t moment the distance is of course v0 cosine theta time t t moment t1 t2 or t t whatever and so you no know, this already know but the only thing is i don't know where is the y at the time t is so when you derive that one so basically, but we, what do we know? We know the VYT equals to V0 sine theta minus GT, right? I reorder it. So this is what I we have. Minus GT plus V0 sine theta. And now I re re rearrange it. This is what we have. I want from here to get what is my, my Y location my y location as time. But we know, we know, we know, we know the definition of velocity. What is velocity? Velocity is, velocity is the displacement by time, derivative, which really means we know the vy is function of t equals dy which is function of t dt correct so basically we know here we only need to arrive here so this is again antiderivative or integral right so now we're seeing that we have a function with a linear function of t can you get a function yt as derivative is a linear function of t saying that can we get a yt which dy dt is a linear function of t that's easy because we know x squared derivative is 2x is a linear function linear function and as function to after derivative is linear function, antiderivative is a is a is a quadratic, right? So therefore, can you easily say that what kind of what kind of y t once derivative give you this, and that's easy. So that is v zero, the first one. If I time a t as a derivative is y, the t is gone because derivative is one, so that is this one. For the second one, so what what can the second one derivative become minus gt? Uh, that is easy too. That is one half t square. This guy's der derivative become because t squares derivative is two t. So two and two cancel, that become minus GT. So that is here. Don't forget we need a, adding also a constant because constant derivative is zero and still give you the same thing here. So I leave the constant. But then we'll see that's the constant. How can we de decide constant by the initial point? So y, y zero, T zero is zero. So T zero, T zero, and I know constant is zero is zero. 
So therefore, finally, yt is so yt is v zero sine theta time t minus one half gt squared. That's it. Simple, correct? If you understand derivative, uh, well, wow, this is really simple. Yeah, this derivative is this constant, this one plus you know minus gt, which is here. And this derivative is is acceleration, which is this is gone become minus g. That is minus g. The 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 the, the, the towards towards the negative y direction towards ground. So that y. So it's it's basically if you look at it like this formula, velocity formula and the displacement position formula for y direction, you will see, oh, this is there's nothing. There's it's just you know just a basic basic thing, right? It's very easy. Once you have the derivative concept. Simple? So meanwhile, we already know x, x is uh, is is uh, is a constant movement v0 cosine theta time t. So that, that gives you any time of location. Got it? Any time location. Any time location. And since we already know when t when t when t one equals to uh, t one equals to two v zero sine theta g, the ball hit the top top of the curve. If you put this one back to here, then you can get y at t one. We means at the top of the curve, what is the height? This is total height, right? That's the that's the height. So height equals the ball hit the hit the height is the ball hitting at t one time hitting the highest of the curve. So that gives you h. You put it back, meaning you put it back quickly. It become becomes two v zero square sine square divided by g. Correct. So the t is this. The so minus one half g times t t squared means four v square sine square divided by g square, and so you cancel out to cancel cancel. So, oops, something wrong. Oh no! Sorry, sorry. The T one is not two. This like this is total T. It's uh, doubled. This T one is only this. This that is big T is two. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So that's why 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 become zero. <laughs> you see why become zero, right? It's the same because of course uh, after if you I I use a full time, it's come back to the original location. That's why I I cannot prove this formula is right. Isn't that? Did you get it? I, I, I accidentally use the whole time T, bigger uh, capital letter T time to put into this formula and that Y becomes zero, go back, went back to original initiation position. So that is, now I, I needed to go half, half of that because that is peak of the, so that is here. It's no two, here is node four. Right. So that so that eventually give you give you two G. So that is H. Correct? Yeah, I, I never remember the formula, so therefore I don't know. I, I assume this is correct. You guys if you someone memorize formula, but Cool. Basically, go back. The horizontal travel the distance here is two theta. Okay, now the sine theta square. Okay, so this one is square. So that's the difference. 
the height is v squared times sine theta squared divided by 2g. The traveled total distance d equals v squared times sine 2 theta divided by g. I think that's it. So that's basically the plastic movement trajectory. Everything, we got everything here. If you are family with this, it's really nothing, right? This is a really, if you go back, really nothing. It's basically starting with a simple, starting with a simple second law of f equals ma, and because it's only velocity, only weight is only force along the y negative y direction. Therefore, we know as this formula, y direction velocity is uh, derivative is minus g. So that's only 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 formula we have. dv of x dt is zero because we, x direction no force. So and combined with initial condition that vertical direction velocity v0 sine theta horizontal v0 cosine theta and uh, at t0 that's all we know we need to know and then we can we can quickly derive all those and without much challenge so the so again let me let me summarize um, more paper so again let me summarize um, so in this case we have two directions uh, one is x directions one is y directions right so x directions we know that x direction force is zero y direction force is minus mg And uh, because, and we know F equals MA, and therefore we know that AX equals zero, AY equals two minus G. From here we know DVX DT equals two zero, and we know that VX equals two constant which will be equals to Vx zero, correct? And uh, from here we know dVy dt equals to minus g by definition. So then we know Vy has to be a function like gt plus something constant, this formula. Then so use the initial condition, so we know this one is V zero sine theta, right? Then we, we quickly, we get to the velocity, both Y and X direction, done? Yeah, we, we, we X zero is V zero um, um, cosine theta, right? So from here we will see, oh, so what is, what is uh, movement or we call the s x or called x direction. X equals to what? Well, x equals to x equal. Go back a little bit. Right, let me restate it. I like to keep using a calculus concept. Um, make sure this this you are will follow you for a while once you learn it. So because we x equals d dx dt, vy equals dy dt, right? S velocity is the move position, move, I mean, um, 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 derivative to time. Okay, so, so in that case, what is x? So what can the x function derivative become a constant? Oh yeah, sure, that is cosine theta time t. So that is. Of course, plus a constant, again, constant, 
But since x times zero, x equals zero, this constant is also zero. So that is describe my x position anytime. At zero is zero anytime. And then from here, from here, you know, you look at the two. So what is y function equal in, in order to be in order to derivative of y becomes this? Oh yeah, that's also equals simple that is two one half gt square just this time this guy's derivative becomes this guy and uh, this guy's derivative becomes this guy so y is a t function x is t function correct then this two give uh, plus a constant again constant will be cancelled since at time zero y is also zero so so those two easily give me the any time location on x any time location on y therefore i can completely describe this curve anytime i know the location x i know the location y i know the location x i know the location y at time correct of course you can say Oh, what if I don't? I want to know this curve function. I don't want to as function of time. Then you put this one. You change t equals x divided by v zero cosine theta. You put it back here. Then you can derive y as a function of x. So that is parabola. Correct. So what what is function? What is a uh, what is curve look like? So curve look like is because t equals to x divided by v zero cosine theta here. Then put this one back to here. Then y as function for x now equals to one half g t square x square v square cosine square plus we sine theta time t which is x divided by v zero cosine theta right so that is basically yeah you can simplify it and it's but that basically is y is a quadratic relationship is node because this here is our region, right? This negative means this uh, parabola is facing down. So of course you can find the find the the maximum here by by whatever way you want to do derivative. You want to use your pay fang, uh, uh, you know, algebra method. This is this is a function. Just one page, see, one page. So, right, right. I, I, I never, I never need to remember any formula. I can derive everything from here to here, just based on here. Nothing else. Just a little bit of calculus. And remember the concept. That's it. So that is one page. Right. Correct. Of course, then uh, you, you can easily calculate what is height here, what is total travel distance at uh, D here. No much issue, right? Correct? So, so we solved everything? Is that okay? Okay. So now I go back to a more fundamental thing about the two-dimensional movement according to Newton law, okay? Two-dimensional really means on the surface, on the plane, you have x direction, you have y direction, okay? And uh, you have a vector, we call it r, means the position vector. So at this any time you're in the in in my x y coordinate, 
sorry, this is uh, coordinate, you have a location x and y, right? Which is a function of t. Both are function t. X is function of t, y is function of t, right? So basically, r is uh, also function of t, correct? So it's very general, correct? Of course, this one projector here is give you an x position, give you a y position. So now, now I go, I, I, I go, go to pure math, okay? So what, you know, I, I have the r vector described by here, which is a function of t, correct? Very general, okay. I, I, I don't say what, what, what it is in concrete. This represents anything. So I have the vector. So what is velocity, which also vector? Velocity is dr, a change rate of the, this position factor, correct? Any problem? And what is acceleration? dv dt. Of course, this is function of t2, function of t2 in general. So that's it. That is a simple, uh, simple two dimensional movement. Everything is here. Then coupled with math, that's all you need. Of course, you can say, oh, what, you know, how I, I resolve this one? Well, if you, we, we have to separate split into two di direction. If I assume this one is x t function, I call it x hat plus y t function y hat. Y hat is basically a unit vector direction. Tell me this is x direction, this is y direction. That's it. Okay. Or sometimes people saying this is x t called i, y, t, j, means this one is i, this means is j, means the, just tell you this x direction, y direction, that's it. Okay, so x function, y function, x coordinate, y coordinate, x function of time, and it's combined with those two give you the, the vector of location anytime. And now what is velocity? This one. Uh, that is basically the x t dt because this guy is a constant, is a vector. The y t dt j. Or sometimes we see x t dot i y dot j. That's it. So velocity is derivative of if you decompose into two direction is x, fun, x positional x position function derivative plus y function derivative combination is the velocity vector. And then what is acceleration? Acceleration, you have, your acceleration is d dt of vt. vt we already know is x, T, Y, T. Then derivative, derivative. Actually, sometimes we call it double derivative, derivative twice. That's it. So that's a that's a Newton uh, new uh, that's a two dimensional in plane two dimensional movement uh, description by Newton law and uh, I may mean by by this, this this isn't really Newton law until you have f equals m a which means f x f equals f x i plus f y j, correct? And uh, so that is m a 
and which is m x t i plus m y t j so basically f x equals m x dot f y equals m y dot that's it so that's a newton law with a definition of velocity and the speed and under a two-dimensional x y coordinate system it's only the half page thing is everything so you can use this one to solve all the two-dimensional movement um, by using you know of course you, you need it you need to, to use our calculus derivative integral okay or derivative anti-derivative if you want to think uh, integral as anti-derivative so that's it that's all so this is um, basically um, you can see that the case we're dealing with before was just a special case it's a special example very simple example of here the reason it's simple is because we have we have have only a, a force has only one direction and is a constant force it's not a function of time yet because it's mg constant if it's function of time, then everything has to go back to here and then follow the more strict deal with, especially dealing with this kind of, you know, antiderivative and so on. So, you know, we can we can artificially create a problem saying, oh, like how about the force is function of time? You want to try that way? Fine, let's try that. Let's how about let's try that. Uh, I never, you know, I just came out with this idea. Let's try that and uh, see how you know. Do, do we want to try? Do people do we do we really want to try that way? Saying let's say let's artificial create a problem. Let's say the we shoot a cannonball, right? And uh, we the force the force is not a constant rather it is writing into a form like g t the force increase with time oh mgt mgt mass and still give you a one of the g and and um, and um, and the uh, function of time so basically once i kick the ball out or the cannon shoot the ball out and uh, i still see here theta this v zero and uh, so this x direction y direction the shooting out the the so the force along the y direction and still horizontal is no no force y direction is function of t it's not constant it's increase with time the first second 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 is double third second is triple the force what if this can we solve that do you want to solve that give you homework It's just artificial creates this problem. Okay. So I so so in this case, uh, let, let's quickly do this. Okay. So we have two direction, y direction, x direction. X direction is still same. X direction nothing change because x direction still is no force, and everything still x direction still go back to here. It's the same thing. X direction f x equals zero. Therefore, still this one and uh, position still this one and the position still this is nothing change right x direction completely independent from y direction but how about the y direction y direction we know okay now go back to f y equals to m a y equals to negative m g t still still drag it down right okay it's the negative direction so this then we know a y equals negative g t not not before negative g g so in this case how to describe 
Um, well, we know the ay is dvy dt. So therefore, vy is what in order to get a linear function of time acceleration? That's easy. gt square. Correct? So this derivative is this. Need to add a constant because the constant derivative is zero. So don't this one, this is more general. Derivative is this one. So we have to say uh, vy zero equals to, since vy zero equals to this one is gone. So this one has to be v zero sine theta, correct? Okay, now we have the first one. So, so here, vy equals dy dt, correct? So what is y position as function? So what kind of function derivative we got, got to here? Um, that is, correct? Because t cubed as a function, a derivative three t squared, three t squared become one half g t squared, correct? And then this one become we sine theta and adding a t. So that derivative plus constant. So that derivative give you, that position derivative give you velocity, that velocity give your accelerator, Ration, which relate to force by Newton's second law. So that is it. that's it. So in that case, in that case, the constant will be y zero still x equals zero. This one still come gone. So so therefore, see now this one becomes our 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 uh, y y location y location. Do we know, do we know, uh, do we know how high this guy bar goes before it fall down? Well, in that case, we know when this guy equals to zero, so that is a time hitting the highest, highest position. So that gives you T1, which means the time, equals to v0 sine theta 2 divided by g square root, correct? Yes, I think so, 2, yes, yeah, that's the time. So you put the time 2 here, then you can get y t1, so that is your height, equals to anyway, so you know how to calculate. I put it back. So you got this one is basically our height. So you can say the height is, in this case, the height is compared to the standard case. And if the, this one is bigger or smaller, I'm sure it's smaller. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can prove that. So the question like this, the question like this, you won't be able to solve with, with, um, without um, uh, calculus knowledge. And uh, I, could, uh, I could create another problem saying, how about fg sine t? <laughs> it's very, it's, uh, it's very, it's like sine wave. The, 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 the force is changing with time as a sine wave. Increase, decrease, increase coming down and uh, sine wave. Can you solve that one again? This, you know, I can create any kind of this kind of problem. So you can go back again, solve everything. So that become fun, right? Isn't that? So this kind of problem, you won't be solved with conventional way uh, because un unless you have some calculus knowledge. So, what, but meanwhile, is how powerful calculus is once you have this kind of knowledge, this become really, really simple, straightforward. You don't even need to remember the formula. It doesn't make sense to remember those formula.
Cool. Um, I think we should stop here. It's already 11.15. I didn't realize time flies so fast. Um, I, I hope it's a meaningful uh, lesson, um, lecture for you. And um, I, although I, I didn't intend to talk about this today, I, 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 I went in like, I went in like change the course um, uh, on fly. It's, uh, you know, just based on um, your feedback. Okay. Uh, we can talk about anything and um, well I can try to talk about anything and uh, if you you give me a good uh, some feedback is that uh, good and um, and I think we yeah I really want you to go back to go over derive you know take a p take a piece of paper and uh, take a pencil and and Go go step by step by yourself. Eventually, close the book, close the you know shut shut everything down. Just a piece, just yourself take a piece of paper. If you are able to derive the same way like I did, then you master it. Then you have no problem. Those kind of, then the, all the issues become very very simple for you. Okay. I really hope you understand this whole concept. And uh, so this is great example to explain uh, you know the derivative. Or antiderivative, and give you the you know the the bridge between physics and the calculus, between physics and the science and the math, and the good example. Of course, we have a lot more example later how to connect those two in a very powerful way, and even even amusing examples, interesting example. This is this those example actually to be boring, I think, but anyway, those are the typical trajectory. You know those. A trajectile example is um, typical. Everybody studied when we studied the Newton law of physics, and that's the first of uh, first batch of example. Anyway, I just try to generalize it, make it much simpler. So basically, whatever you you may need to spend like two weeks, three weeks to learn those, I, I explain you in in just uh, two hours, and uh, hope hope you are able to grasp that. Saying, oh no, you know what I learned uh, to in the past two three weeks. In, in this section, actually, oh, now I can completely take it easy. Now it's for me, it's non, no, no issue at all because I know calculus. I know the definition of what is, der what is a derivative, what is, what is acceleration, what is velocity. That's all I, I need to know. Done. Is that good? Then, then, uh, then next time, next time I like to continue this. Next time, I like to I like to give you an even fancier example. So next time, I want to um, okay. Here, here is what I I, I prepared a um, long time ago. So this is what I just went over the R vectors, position vector here, and then the uh, velocity is two direction decompose and you know dx dt and uh, and so the acceleration is uh, second time derivative. So this science basically der derived twice, do the derivative twice. And of course, once you have v x v y, so, so really v is uh, you know the Perigotten theory, Perigotten theory, and um, you know the you know Newton law decomposed in two direction. So that's it. Okay. So that is what it just means. And this is under the condition of the two dimensional movement in x y coordinate. And uh, next next time, I like to talk about polar coordinate, which will become even more interesting. So if we have a polar coordinate and r, of course, x, y position now is not really, it's go, going r theta. We need a theta get into polar coordinate. So, so x becomes r cosine theta, y becomes r sine theta. In that is under the polar coordinate, I will redo everything I just did. So basically starting from a vector, position vector to Velocity to acceler um, acceleration, and so basically, see, I go over, I go over a polar coordinate r and the theta 
case, not XY case, because in Poland it's on, only R and C matters. So in this case, I go over this, quickly go over those, uh, derive this, derive, eventually derive, derive, very simple derive Y in the constant circle case, V is R time omega is angular velocity, acceleration is omega squared time R, or V squared time R divided by R. So that, that leading us to deal with uh, circular motion and by using a polar geometry and go over very general case, okay? Those are the, you know, here basically we were able to go back to, to later on calculate the orbiting case. All the orbiting case we are needed to use this. Like Earth orbiting around the sun and derive the Kepler law and moon orbiting around the Earth. So those are all the, all the, all the math we need. But it's not that, look as complicated, it's not. Actually just from a polar geometry, go step by step and we will derive all of those. And then, then you don't need to worry about remember those formula anymore. And then we can, we can go back to solve all those spin issue. For example, I was talking about the spin of the bucket. I was talking about how to, how to calculate the surface shape of a spinning bu uh, bucket of water. And uh, so that is nothing now, nothing more, just a Newton second law plus a polar geometry. And I will derive later, so we can derive, derive this formula, this uh, parabola shape. Why is parabola shape? And uh, when spin a uh, water bu bucket. So those become really interesting, but it's a um, you know, little bit, little bit of calculus and nothing more, and plus uh, Newton law. And, uh, and here, of course, you use the uh, uh, polar circular motion geometry I just mentioned about. You need to derive why the acceleration in the circular motion is V squared divided by R. And uh, so in that case, we can, we can enjoy this kind of example, like you know, spinning case, how the circular motion Earth orbiting uh, Sun. So all of those, uh, you know, will be, uh, we will try to do in the next uh, couple of uh, lectures. Is that okay? I, ho I hope you, you know, I hope you finding finding as interesting, um, uh, because um, uh, because I try to generalize. Um, I I think in school, uh, school school teaches a different way. School teach a very specific example, simplified simplified example, but uh, I try to teach more general, starting from a concept, what and the math too. So you have a concept, understand the concept well. You never get confused because if you get confused, go back to definition, go back to concept. And once you have concept, you have a very powerful math tools. Those two combined, everything else is easy. Everything, just like I show you, everything else is very easy. But you have to understand concept, definition. And it's in family with the math tool like calculus. So what function is derivative is what function, what functions antidirect is what function. And then dealing with all this kind of issue mass, the first half year of your physics course, even AP physics course become simple and easy. Got it? So that is, uh, that is. Okay, I'll see you next time then. Take care. any question. Just uh, you know, what, I will send you the link, and uh, you know, I'm sure may, some of you may not be able to follow everything, but uh, you know, try to go back little by little. And if you have questions, just ask me. Um, I don't think it's that hard to to understand. Uh, but uh, if you, I, I just go very quick. That's it. But uh, you, uh, but I did give you some good example. So if you have problem, and uh, anytime, welcome to ask me. I can, I can, I can, I can go 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 with you one more time. Or I, can, I can suggest you some YouTube uh, video you want to watch to try to understand uh, you know, a little bit more from different perspective, whatever. And, uh, and so once you understand this, we can, can, we can take fly. We can, we can try all the other great examples. And then you, you are, you, then you are realize the, the math is really fun. I mean, the physics really fun. And, um, and uh, so, um uh it's not it's not that complicated at all right. once you understand the what what mechanism behind 
And uh, as I said, concept, which is definition, and math two. Those two combine, you are become a great physicist. Got it? And of course, understand the pictures. Okay, good. Okay, um, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Take care.